came up to the cloud forest to get the famous Kona coffee, which if you know about is one of the most delicious in the world. And while doing so, we took the top off the Jeep and it was amazing. <laughs> we got our Fujis, so let's go get some coffee. It smells really good. Yeah, so light roast. Three kinds of roast, yeah, light, which I do like, medium and dark, which I'm not so much into. Mm. Yes, it's good. It's good. Really good. We're at Mountain Thunder Coffee where they do free tours every 30 minutes and they look really friendly and they give you free coffee samples. So I can't go wrong with this place so far. And there's a shop in here with lots of delicious coffee. We just sampled it and it's really, really good. I love the art as well. Were the only two? Have you guys been up here before? No. 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 We tried on Saturday. You but tried? It, on Saturday. Is it too late or what? No, it was closed on Saturday. Oh yeah, Iron Man. Yep. Ah, that's why. <laughs> we're only it was, closed yes. three days a year and you found us <laughs> on those days. So we're here at Mountain Thunder Coffee at 3,200 feet above sea level, which is why it feels so nice outside. <laughs> it's hot down in Kona and usually muggy this time of year and it's always a relief coming up here. So Kona Coffee is famous because it tastes really good and that's largely in part due to the, the growing conditions up here in, in the Kona region. They are perfect for coffee, about as good as you can get anywhere. So there's a Kona coffee belt. It's an actual geographic region that you have to grow the coffee within to call yourself Kona coffee. So coffee here in the Big Island in the Kona region starts at about 800 or 900 feet above sea level. That's where it starts growing. And then it comes all the way up to where we are here. We're the highest at 3,200 feet. So between that elevation range is where coffee is most happy. That's about two and a half miles up the mountain. And then that belt goes south past Captain Cook, about 25 or 30 miles that way. The reason they define that region is because the soil conditions and the weather create a certain taste to the cup of coffee. So to be grown in there, yes, you can call yourself Kona coffee and we are within that belt. It's kind of like champagne grapes or champagne wine. You can't call yourself champagne unless you're actually grown in that region. Yeah, so Kona coffee as an industry can get a little bit defensive and edgy sometimes because to be the real thing is very expensive and there's not a lot of it. There's only about 6,000 acres or so planted of true Kona coffee and there's six to 700 small farms that grow it. It's mostly mom and pop farms still less than five or seven acres in size. So yeah, to back up, it's the growing conditions here that cause the coffee to taste so good and it's also how we process it, which is what we're gonna talk about here in the next part of the tour. This is a coffee tree here. If you've never seen one, you can come up and take a look at it. It's not gonna bite you. All the coffee grown here on the farm and in the island in the Kona region is pretty much all Arabica coffee. There's another commercial variety called Robusta. It doesn't taste as good, though it produces more. So everything here is Arabica. This is a Keturah Arabica tree, and the tall, skinny one up there, and some of these ones grown back here are called Kona Typica. That was the first variety first brought here in the late 1820s, and it comes from Guatemala. So coffee um, forms fruit, just like a cherry tree, but it's not sweet fruit to eat. And when the coffee is ripe, it turns bright red, which we'll see on the next part of the tour. So we call the ripe ones coffee cherries. Flushes of heavy rainfall will produce the flowers that you can see here. Coffee is a member of the jasmine family, which is why the flowers look very similar. Um, coffee is a difficult crop to pick and manage because it fruits continuously for a large part of the year. Our harvest season runs for at least seven months out of the year. It starts in July and it can go all the way through January. So it doesn't ripen all at once like a product like apples or corn. It kind of fruits continuously as here. And you can see we're getting new flowers, yeah. right? And then on this one here, you've got the tiny coffee beans forming, then you've got ones that are close, and you're gonna have red ones, and this is all happening at the same time. So in order to deal with that, we hand pick all of the ripe coffee, which is very labor intensive and very expensive. Our pickers make 60 to 70 cents per pound, and they can pick three, four, or 500 pounds in a day. So they do pretty well, but it's hard work. The reason we only want the red ones is because that's what tastes the best. If we mix the green coffee in with the red ones, it tastes sour and bitter and it's just not pleasant. So we're in harvest season right now. Once all the cherry comes off the tree, we need to process it quickly because it actually starts to spoil and ferment in less than 48 hours. Hmm. Is coffee considered a tree? Technically it's a tree. Most people think it looks like a shrub, mm -hmm. which I would agree, but yeah, it is a tree. Does any place in the world do it mechanical harvesting? Yeah, oh yeah, a lot of mechanical harvesting. The Kauai Coffee Company does mechanical harvesting. Um, yeah. 
if you have the land for it where it's smooth and it's not rocky and, and that you can mechanically harvest, we just think it doesn't taste quite as good because there's a lot of mixing in. They can process it out, but then there's a lot of waste. So hand picking is going to produce the best tasting cup of coffee. Do all the Kona Coffee companies up here hand pick? Or yeah, I don't know of any farms here that are mechanically picking, mechanical. mostly because of the terrain yeah, so and sorry. of the taste. Okay. Our farm here grows seven acres of 100% organic coffee. We also buy cherry, or this, this is the ripe coffee here, from local Kona coffee farmers, and we process it. So we're a grower and a processor. It's very similar to the, the wine industry. A lot of farmers will just grow grapes and then either sell their juice or their fruit to a winery to then process and bottle. Same thing here. So we're buying a large volume of cherries from local farmers. We take down their plot number to make sure that their farm is within the Kona coffee belt, and then we process it to the highest standards. We separate the pea berry out I mean, in the dry mill, which I'll show you oh, after this. Have you guys heard of pea berry coffee before? <laughs> Most people just know that it's really expensive, and there's a reason. Um, in pea berry beans, I can show you. Pea berry is smaller and rounder. A good example of a pea berry there. So there's just one round bean and one sliver on the other side. Basically, what happened is it's a genetic anomaly when the when the coffee cherry forms. And this bean is believed to take all the nutrients from the one next to it. So it's sort of like a supercharged coffee bean. So this is our dry milk. Coffee is kind of like a peanut where you have to shell it before you can roast it. So if I can get it out of there. So you've got the outer shell layer. You've also got this fine papery stuff. This is called silver skin. It's like a chaff. We want to remove both of those layers. Otherwise, it just burns in the roaster and it doesn't taste good. This is a Diedrich. This is a, these guys make pretty much the best roasting equipment in the industry. They're actually in Idaho. Here we can do 100 pounds of green coffee at a time. This is just basically a giant rotating oven. It's like a cement mixer that roasts coffee. So this big drum inside is on a big bearing through the center and it just turns. We preheat it to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The coffee gets loaded in from that hopper up top. That bag is not, that's just a prop. It muffles the sound from the loader. Uh, we actually dump the green coffee into the floor back there and an elevator pulls it out into the, into the hopper. We don't want to work that hard. <laughs> so 100 pounds goes in, preheated to 400 degrees. It's turning and it's roasting. The longer it roasts, the darker it gets. It's not super complicated. The coffee behaves like popcorn inside the roaster. Um, it will actually pop and crack and expand. So that's why roasted coffee is about 20 to 25% larger than a green coffee bean. It's expanded. All right, so we are nicely caffeinated after sampling all the coffee here at Mountain Thunder Coffee. Very nice place, very friendly people, very good coffee, man. It's a gorgeous area here in the cloud forest. It's never too cold, never too hot. It's just right. perfect. And this is supposedly the, as far as they know anyway, the highest elevation coffee that's grown here in Hawaii. They're at 33,200 feet. And yeah. it's a really, really nice climate. Yeah. Very different from further down. Uh, closer to the beach. Exactly. So if you're in Kona, the good thing is you can go up and down and get a different climate within the 10-20 minutes that it takes. Very easy. <laughs> then you can cool off or heat up. Up to you. And get amazing coffee.